<laughs> yeah! That's my movie. That's mine. Did I make that? I don't think so. Yeah, I did. I made that. Yeah! So if I didn't freak you out already with that weird, crazy, interesting intro, you may be wondering who, what, where, why, how, what is Tommy, who is Tommy, why? That's basically what this whole video is gonna be about, and I've been waiting to talk about this since day one. I just haven't done it because... I don't know. This is something that I have been working on for over two years now. I've been wanting to talk about it, and now it's just like my time to. I'm just ready to talk about it on a YouTube platform and like just get my message and my word out there. Especially this is like one of my biggest dreams and my biggest passions and it's, I've never been so proud and so loving of something that I've created and this is it and even though I'm not going to be able to make it for a really long time, which I'll explain in the rest of this video, um, I'm still so happy and so proud of it and I cannot wait for my future and what it holds with this. In this documentary style 60 minutes whatever video, I want to show you guys, whoever's watching, whoever has been watching for the past two years, my entire journey with writing this, creating this, everything that has gone into it, all of the people that have been involved, and my future, my plans. Just introduce you to the characters, introduce you to the story, and where I you know, as a writer, have grown from it, and um, just everything. I just want to talk about everything that I have put, every tear, every emotion that I have put into this. Yeah, I wanted to talk about my entire journey with making this wonderful story that had started in my head just with a simple thought, with a simple name, and I turned it into what it is now and what it will continue to be. I hope you enjoy whatever this video turns out to be. Yeah. Make sure to grab a snack. This is Tommy. My movie. I don't know. It, even if I don't make it in the future, which would be absolutely insane of me to do, to not make it, but just, you know, the whole process of what goes into making a movie is just giving me that opportunity and experience. So even though I'm most likely going to make Tommy in the future, I just want to know what I'm doing first. Besides becoming a a director and going into the film industry, like making Tommy is one of my biggest dreams because I've been so passionate about it and I've never loved an idea as much and been so attached to an idea as much as Tommy and I just feel like it's it's so real to me. So I just, you know, I want it to be real someday. To explain what Tommy is, you first need to explain who he is because Tommy is about, you guessed it, Tommy. <laughs> I always thought, what could the movie be called instead? Is it really just gonna be called Tommy and that's it? But in my opinion, yeah. First of all, Tommy is a guy that I came up with starting all with a little vine. I was in seventh grade when I started making vines. Once eighth grade ended, I made this vine. I had no plan for it. I just kind of like, I bought this suit. We had this like ginger ale beer, but it wasn't actually beer. It was like a virgin drink, but it like, it looked like a beer bottle. You know, I just looked like a mess. I had blood all over my face. My hair was all messy. I was in like this, you know, cheap, sh cheap suit that I brought, I bought for my eighth grade promotion. I acted as if I was being punched in the face and I just thought that looked so cool. And I made this thing and the caption was, you didn't get the money in time. Not having the best night, are you? My inspiration for the vine actually be uh, came from Paul V. Jackson, and he was a viner that I loved so much. He was super cool. Um, and he made all of these really cool vines, like cinematically appealing, and his shots and his lights and the stories that he would make all in six seconds were so incredible to me. So I wanted to make something like that. I really don't know where the story came from with me getting punched. It's so weird to me because I have no idea how I got that idea. It's just kind of like lost in space. I just kind of made it. So then I made another one. And I made it more edgy. And then I had my friend play Alicia, 
Tommy's fiance, which I will explain. I actually started creating the Tommy series on Vine. Once Vine shut down, I kind of just stopped. And at first it was only focused on Tommy and Alicia and their love story. Tommy, in my mind, was like this careless, alcoholic, young guy who was caught up in, in crime and like, you know, his, his fiance or girlfriend was sad. And that's just kind of what I kept doing. Every vine I made, I would get more masculine and I would embody this character and find out more about this character and deep down who he was. The first time I made the vine, on June 5th, 2016, I was walking around like getting cleaned up, makeup and blood off my face, and I was like, what can I call this? What's a name I can, like a random name that I can call this guy? Immediately, just Tommy popped in my head. It just all started with one little vine, and now we're here. Hey guys, it's Liv, and today we're going to be talking with Maddie about her film, Tommy, and she's going to be explaining who Tommy is, I what had, Tommy I had is. Liv interview me instead because when I talk about things on my own, I talk way too much. So for question number one, we're going to be talking about who is Tommy, how old is he, what do you vision him as, like his hair, his character, okay. just who he is. Who he is. Uh, initially, um, I imagined Tommy to be like 25, that's just like an age I came up with, but Tommy as a person, yeah, he's just this guy who is caught up in the gang life. Not really like gangs though, it's like more like modern mafia kind of crime business. He got into it really young and he had a really, really rough childhood and um, to describe him, I guess, it could be like brown hair, tall, pale. Yeah, um, very edgy. He's kind of emotional, like really overly sensitive, kind of like me. A couple of traits that like I have deep down kind of reflect onto who Tommy is. So I guess that's getting into number two. I was going to say, do you feel as though you incorporated some of your own like feelings of being masculine into Tommy? I feel like I do, yeah. Because when I first created Tommy, like with the vine that I made, when I was filming the vine, I wasn't, it wasn't in my head that I was playing a man. I was just kind of like doing whatever I wanted to do. And then when I watched it back, I was like, who is this guy? Like who? What, can, what name can I put to this character? Yeah, I feel like a lot of my personal masculine feelings and then also a lot of his character traits, like how emotional he can get and how like attached he gets to people, I feel like that can be me as well. What is your take on diversity in this movie? Ooh, what's the question? Um, I want all sorts of people to be in this movie because a lot is going on in like the film industry right now. Like there's just not good casting decisions right now. So I want like people who who actually like identify as what part they're playing to like I want you know for Wes he's gay I want like a I mean openly gay guy to play that character because I feel like that that character is going to be like really real if an actor who's been through those experiences can like portray that I feel like there's not a lot of Latina women in, in film too so Alicia is like Hispanic so I want to include just people of color people who are in the LGBT as you know and then Tommy's also very emotional and I feel like men aren't portrayed as emo emotional in movies either. For characters like Alicia and Wes, will we see any of their backstory in this film as well? Ooh. Yeah, I want to. I haven't written a lot of their sides because I've been so focused on Tommy, but I feel like it would be important since the whole movie is is focused on Tommy's like flashbacks and like we always go back to see like what's going on or what went wrong in his childhood. So I feel like including other people and and in their backstories and their flashbacks like it'll portray like the relationships and how that all came to be and how they came to be as people so i feel like that would be important i just need to write it first <laughs> this is like not more so like about your writing but this is i guess like something different what kind of music will you be incorporating ooh, in your movie ooh, all kinds because i i um live made me a playlist and then i've had uh, another friend named maddie she made me a playlist too and all, I guess all different kinds, because I listen to all different kinds of music, so I want like, you know, R&B, like rap, I love a lot of that stuff. A good soundtrack is like, key when making a movie like this. I want a good soundtrack so it keeps people entertained. Will there be like a feature for Tommy after, like, well, well you haven't written it yet. Will there be a second part oh, to Tommy? I don't know. I don't know, I mean like, would you want there to be or would you want it to be like, start? 
to an ending. I don't know. Anymore. Like, I've thought about that, and there's some, there's a lot of movies out there that don't really need sequels. The story ends where I need it to end, then that's where it needs to end, but I mean, depend, depending on like the reaction it gets. You want like people to want a sequel, to want, like, you want people to want to see what happens next, so. That's just, that's just a decision to make later on. I feel like you're gonna be really disappointed, but that's it! Uh, no, that was a good question. But look at What is the plot? That's something I haven't even talked about yet, and everyone's probably very confused. Like, we get it, Tommy. We, we know who that is. We, we get it. What's the storyline? Where is the movie going? What's going to happen? And I'm not gonna, like, give away too much because that wouldn't be fun at all. The plot are the main events of a play, novel, movie, or similar work devised and presented by the writer as an interrelated sequence. So, I will tell you what that plot is. Mafia movies, heist movies, anything that has to do with like crime where like there's really no good guy in the movie. Everyone, everyone's a piece of shit. <laughs> Tommy doesn't make good decisions. He's not a good person. He doesn't, well he is a good person but he chooses not to do good things. He got involved in like mafia, modern mafia kind of business um, when he was about 18 years old. He was raised in a household with drug addicts and alcoholics. His foster parents were awful and they were taken away by the police and, and Tommy just did not grow up good. So once he was 18, he got involved in this gang and he's now 25 in, in my mind. Um, so he's been in it for seven years. He fell in love with a girl. Like he would do anything to protect her and it would never put her in any sort of harm. Like he loves her. So yeah, to put it easily, Tommy, our main character, has to find out the hard truths about his past, himself, and the ones he loves by by dealing with the kidnapping of his fiance. I just wish I could tell you everything because like keeping it a secret is like hard. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Adam. Hi, I'm Maddie, and I made Tommy. I wrote it myself. Today I'm going to be talking about Tommy. I like came up with the original idea. But don't tell Maddie. Adam told you that he he gave me all the ideas. Oh, well, that's incorrect. So originally when Maddie came to me with Tommy, I was kind of like skeptical and I was like, mm, this really isn't gonna be great. Like, it's not gonna be good. But now, it is. And that's because of me. Again. <laughs> All me. <laughs> um, when I came up with Tommy, I've never, like, been so passionate about something like that before, and I actually wanted to write a full-length, long thing, and I've never done that before. So, when I started writing, I kinda got overwhelmed and I needed some help, so obviously I knew Adam was into acting and obviously I knew that he wasn't like a writer. When Maddie asked me originally like like if I had any, any ideas or like what I, like if I could like give any input, I was like well I don't really know because I'm not really much of like a filmmaker or like a writer. Um, I'm more of like the actor and singer. I'm not really behind the camera or like doing anything else like that. But I knew that he had creativity and like, you know, create like a creative outlook on things. So I was like, hey, do you want to help me come up with some ideas for Tommy? I don't really know where to take the story. I don't know really like how to move on. He has good ideas regarding like how characters should talk to each other. So I came to him for those ideas and then it kind of just went from there. At first it was like really hard because Maddie had like this set idea in her head of like who Tommy was and what the story was and who he was going to be and then I came along and I kind of like came with these like ideas that were different and that, that weren't in her head and then I think like once like she thought about it for a while she's like dang like that's a good idea. When he gave me the idea of Alicia potentially being like the bad guy I was like Oh my god, no, I don't want to do that. When I created Tommy as a character, I was super, like, babyish about him. Like, I wanted, like, he was literally, like, my child. I wanted him to be happy. I wanted him to have a good story. But then I remembered, like, no, this isn't supposed to be a happy story. This is supposed to be, like, really eye-opening to the character. And he's supposed to go through some tough shit. So, after, like, laying the story down and, like, figuring out, oh, 
well, this is literally the, the only place it could go. And that's like what a lot of movies like don't have is the ideas that I gave, so you're welcome. <laughs> oh my f***ing god. Compared to other um, gangster mafia movies, I think Tommy differs because it focuses more on the psychological and like emotional side of things. The whole act of being a gangster itself, because a lot of gangster movies, they're only focused on Ooh, I want to be a gangster. Like that's 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 the main focus. But Tommy is like he is in that setting, but he's also going through things at the same time. I feel very confident that it's going to be a very popular movie. I still do like want co-writers because I am rewriting it, and I want people to be more involved with it because I think obviously film is collaborative, and if you don't have collaborators with you, um, it's going to fail. I mean that's just what film is. It's very you have to work with people. I, I, I think that having co-writers and people helping you is like a really big thing to have. Would you want to see your name in the credits? No, of course not. Hello, we're here to time Tommy the movie. Uh, we've been writing for... Like, nine years. <laughs> Fade in. Exterior. <laughs> Desert. Sunset. Trailer home. Fade in. The film opens on a dry desert afternoon. While we were writing, we would like sometimes stop and like record what we had so far, or like make like these voice memos or recordings and talk about like what we had or ideas for a certain scene. There was one time when we just made like a voice memo about like the trailer, or like she wrote it down in a notebook, like like a sketch of like what the trailer should look like, and just little things like that. Like we would stop and like just kind of like talk about what we had so far. Tommy screams, and we're at somewhere house in the city somewhere yeah so tommy screams and we cut to like the the sun rising a little bit like yeah. you know it's obviously later in the morning and she's up she's like sitting in a chair with her arms she has tied. her arms tied in her mouth not her legs yeah and then and she's like <clears throat> and then the guy hits her he's like shut up <laughs> and she's like and then she kicks him in the balls mm -hmm. and he's like oh and he's like on the floor and then the other guy puts the gun up against her head and then the boss walks in and he's like Boys, I'll take it from here. Like he's like, I'll take it from and here. And who's boys. the boss? Alicia. Alicia's dad. Ooh. Or like your boyfriend is absolutely. F***ed. <laughs> when I want something done, it gets done here and now. I don't know. The um, the bubble works for like five seconds and then it shuts down. The what? My brain you can only have one good idea at a time. I'm really proud of Maddie. I think this is gonna be a really good movie. I think it's gonna be great. And once again, call me. So bye! <laughs> I have a very big connection with Tommy. He is like, I describe him as my son <laughs> because he's, he really is like my child because I created him. I make little short films and all my friends say, why don't you play Tommy in the future? I'm like, I'm not an actor. I just know him best so that's why I play him. And they're like, exactly. You literally portray him so well that you should just play him. I'm like, no, that's not what I want to do. I know his body movements. I know his facial expressions. I know the way he talks. I know the way he looks. What triggers him? I know what hurts him. I know every little thing about him. He's from my brain. But I'm writing a movie. I can't only focus on one character. I need to focus on the other ones. I will talk about the other characters, which I have yet to write their backstories. Wes is uh, Tommy's best friend. Wes, which I connect with a lot. He is gay. That's just a small detail about him. You don't see gay characters in movies that are portrayed as more masculine, strong. You know, you never see like a gay bad guy, even though he's not like bad, but there's one scene that I was writing one time and Tommy and Wes are both going through like an emotional time and Tommy says, I don't know what I would do if you weren't here. Wes is like, I could say the same thing about you. You were there when I came out. You were there when I got kicked out of my house for being who I was. And, and you were there when my only thought was killing myself. You know, all of this stuff. Wes is just this super strong person. He's been through a lot and so is Tommy. But, you know, they can relate because of their, their struggles in their life. So Wes is the best. And then Alicia is another story. Alicia, I can guess in the future, will have like mixed emotions. I 
feel like she's kind of gonna be like the Draco Malfoy of my movie. <laughs> Some people love Draco because he's misunderstood and he was raised the wrong way. That's kind of like Alicia. People could go either way with liking her or not. She's a hard ass, like she's a badass Latina woman. Seeing in, in society today how strong and proud like Latina women are. And I cannot write from a Hispanic point of view because I'm obviously not of that race. Spoiler alert, <laughs> her father is the bad guy in the movie. Five years ago, when she first met Tommy, she was actually ordered to spy on him because of something that he did to that gang. It's really complicated, okay? I'm just not gonna go into it. Alicia was sent to spy on Tommy and she fell in love and quit her her duties. Tommy has no idea that she was ever supposed to spy on him because she didn't tell him. It wasn't her choice to be put in the situation she was. It was because of her father. I realize that there's so much that I can't mention because that would just ruin it. <laughs> so... Before this long video comes to an end, there are a couple more things I would like to talk about. I know a majority of this I've just been talking, but um, this is the most important part. This is summing up everything and what this whole documentary video represents. Take my glasses off. I'd like to thank all of the people who have helped in some way bring Tommy to life. And I'd like to thank for all of your help, all of your support, all of your interest and in having faith in me. I've had a couple people tell me that, um, just go up to me or say to me or text me and say, I genuinely cannot wait to see this in theaters someday. And that is what really, really motivates me to uh, keep going. I would also like to thank the people who have helped me in a more artistic way. Uh, for example, my wonderful girlfriend Liv made me a playlist called Tommy. It's all sorts of music from Post Malone to The Cure all the way to Frank Sinatra that kind of get me in my Tommy mood. Um, my best friend Maddie as well made me a playlist that I absolutely adore. Tommy Volume 1 and Maddie's really good at finding music and putting things together. It's 50 songs total. 25 of the songs are like low tempo, kind of like relaxing music for more less crazy scenes. 25 of the songs are like madhouse, crazy rap music, or like kind of just crazy music in general for the more upbeat, high adrenaline kind of scenes, like more fast scenes. Music is so important to me. I like movies 10 times better when they have a bomb ass soundtrack. So, thank you for that. That's, uh, I love the music that both playlists have, have had. One more thank you I have is to my friend Jackson, who did the most amazing thing for me, is Draw Tommy out for me. And oh my god, look at this! Look at this picture. That's, it, it blew my mind when I saw it for the first time, because I was like, oh my god, that's literally Tommy in someone else's point of view. Ah! It's so cool. So thank you Jackson so much for doing that for me. It literally made like Tommy come to life on paper. So thank you. Um, before I came up with the idea of this video, I had a very random spur of the moment thought to completely rewrite Tommy. And I don't think I've talked about this yet, but yeah. Um, I just, I randomly was like, you know what? Why not? I was writing on rawscripts.com, which is a website that it was introduced to me my freshman year in my digital filmmaking class. And so I had been writing my screenplays on that website. When I was writing with Adam, I would have him log into my Raw Scripts account to edit anything he wanted or to add anything he wanted, and that was just, it was hard. So um, instead, I found a Google Chrome screenplay template that can be installed into Pages. So now I use Pages to write my screenplay. Before I had like this PDF and it was 37 pages of just my script and it was unorganized and then I had other PDFs of other scenes that I had written separately so if I wanted to read anything else I would have to go to separate PDFs and the different like scenes and it was like difficult. So now that I have it on Pages I can edit whenever I want, I can add in different things whenever I want, and I can just have it on one thing. 
and it's so much more organized and I feel so much better about it. I can already see a difference in my writing with the new one compared to the old one. Um, when I'm writing my current one, I put the old one side by side so I can compare while I write, still include the same scenes, but make it 10 times better than it was before. I have a habit of becoming super stressed during my writing process. Like I'll be in my car thinking about Tommy or I'll be at school or I'll just, you know, be thinking about it when I'm not at my laptop writing. Oh my God, how am I going to incorporate this part into this part? How am I going to make this cinematically appealing? Is this going to make sense? Like all of these questions go through my head. I'm like, writing is so stressful and it's really hard to like keep everything that goes into a movie on track by yourself. I get stressed out, so I'm trying to create a new habit of writing things down. I jotted down what I wanted the trailer to look like, and then I put it into Sims 4 to make more of like a 3D visual of what I wanted it to look like. So that was a good way of keeping my idea in my head of what I want his childhood home to look like. I used to jot down screenplays in class and all of this stuff, so I have notebooks full and pages full of just little things that have to do with Tommy. <sighs> and it's all over the place, but it exists. For the past 25, 30 minutes, you've heard me talk about how much the film means to me. But the big question is, how am I gonna get there? What are my goals to be capable of making Tommy in the future? I'm only 16, and I have all of high school, all of college, to focus on making Tommy as good as it can get. One of my other biggest goals is to be at the 100th Oscars. So that's 10 years from now, since the 90th just passed. I can't promise myself that I will have Tommy made to be featured at the Oscars. That's a little bit of a far fetch, but I hope to just be there. 100 years worth of Oscars, that's crazy. So just to be at the 100th one, whether or not I'm in the industry yet or I'm successful, whatever. I just want to be there. Um, I just want to study film, get a film degree, and then I'm hoping to get internships in sets, work for different movie companies. I want to be a PA, just start off really small and hopefully get my name up there so that I can make my own stuff. It's so much to think about, but when I have such a big aspiration to do something, it's something that's on my mind 100% of the time. <laughs> Those are my dreams. Trust me, I know how much making a movie costs. That's the scary thing. But I know how much Tommy still needs and I know how much more work I need to put into it for it to be ready, obviously. <sighs> so after hearing me ramble for 30 minutes about my movie, um, I hope you look forward to my future. I know I do. The crazy thing is that I'm documenting this so I can look back and see how far I've come from making this. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for wanting to meet Tommy and being interested in Tommy. Um, hopefully him and I will see you in the movie theater someday.